Welcome to Change It Up Radio here with Paula Shaw. I am so happy to have you here with me today. It's a very, very interesting time in our world and in our lives. And we have much to talk about today with our guest, Brahman Kiri, a spiritual teacher here in Encinitas, California in the San Diego area. And she will be joining us very shortly. Please stay with us because she has some great insight and information and inspiration to share with us. But welcome to Change It Up Radio. As most of you know, I'm Paula Shaw. I am your host. I am also the author of Saying the Right Thing When You Don't Know What to Say. This little book is probably one of the handiest things you could ever have in your purse or your glove box because it gives you very specific do's and don'ts about what to say and what not to say when you're having those difficult conversations, especially when people are dealing with emotional issues. I'm also the author of Grief, When Will This Pain Ever End?, which also is a pretty handy book to have at the ready these days, since I have shared with you before that, in my opinion, we're a world of grievers now because so many of our lives have been changed. We've all suffered loss on one level or another as a result of this pandemic. And so I think it's really important that we understand grief and that we know how to work with it and, and how to help ourselves move through it and not get stuck in it. I am also a speaker and a life transition coach. And in my work, I use the tools of energy psychology so that we take it a step beyond talk therapy. And I help people move through issues more rapidly by working with the energy system, which is of course the biofield the chakras and the meridians. If you'd like more information about my work or you want to sign up for a complimentary session with me, you can do that at paulashaw.com. That's paulashaw.com. By the way, on paulashaw.com is also a free gift of 20 things to say and 20 things not to say in those difficult conversations. And I tell you, that little guide comes in so handy because it really gives you the, the kind of the basic do's and don'ts and very specific statements that are helpful in a difficult conversation and statements that you definitely want to steer away from because they won't help that conversation move along in the direction that you would like it to. Also, if you would like to get more information about Change It Up Radio, if you want to know who our listeners are, or if you're interested in becoming a sponsor or a guest on this show, you can go to changeitupradio.com. That's changeitupradio.com. We also have a Facebook page and an Instagram page, and there are many, many ways to find out about this show. We are also on Podopolo, which, by the way, is the newest platform for podcasts and one that I think you really want to check out. It's got gaming and rewards and all sorts of incentives and a lot of really fabulous podcasts. All right. So one of the things that I think is, is so important that is going on right now that I really wanted to talk about today is that we're going through unprecedented times here in America. Never before have some of the things that have happened recently happened. First of all, as we're all very aware, we're dealing with a pandemic and a pandemic that has affected the whole world. And life on this planet, as we've all known it, has never been affected in this way before. And so we're all dealing with that. And as I mentioned already, that's created huge amounts of loss for everybody and upheaval. You know, we, we 
humans don't deal well with change. We talk about this all the time here on Change It Up Radio. While we need change and while it fosters growth, we don't like the discomfort of the unfamiliar. And we've all been immersed in all of this unfamiliar territory this year with the pandemic and now with what's going on with our government. We're about to go through a huge change because we're changing presidents. Where There's an inauguration in the offing. And yet there are many people out there who are not dealing well with this change. In fact, who can't accept this change as being real. And many of us, when we have change thrust upon us, we do have a difficult time dealing with it. But it's particularly hard when we aren't dealing with truth, when we, when we maybe don't even know the truth for sure. In fact, yesterday I was in the presence of a person who adamantly, adamantly professed that there is no COVID virus that it's all a hoax, that it's actually chemtrails, and that, that, that you know, we, we are all being fooled. And she was absolutely, adamantly believing what she was saying. And that's part of what's going on right now. We have a lot of people who adamantly believe one thing, and a lot of people who adamantly believe another. And unfortunately, some of those people have resorted to violence to try to bring everybody else around to their way of thinking. And violence, violence by its very nature can never bring about peace. You know that uh, my work deals with energy psychology. So I talk often on this show about energy. And the bottom line is everything in the universe is a vibrational energy. Everything is made of particles and waves of energy. And the vibration of violence and the vibration of peace will never be the same. They are not vibrating equally, so they cannot meet. They cannot meet. One is a very high vibration. The other is a very low vibration. You know, I, I hearken back to Mother Teresa, who was once asked to attend a, um, an anti-war rally. She said, if you hold an anti-war rally, I shall not attend. But if you hold a pro-peace rally, invite me. What's the difference? Why did she say that? because one takes your focus to something that is a very low vibration, war, violence. And even if you are anti-war, you see you cannot be anti-war without bringing the focus of war into your consciousness. If you're at a pro-peace rally, the visions of peace, the concept of peace is more of what is permeating your consciousness. And this is a fact that I know for sure and that I have seen over and over and over again. Whatever you focus on, you feed energy to. And whatever you feed energy to, will grow. So we really want to focus on what we want to grow. Do we want to grow violence and fear and anger? Or do we want to grow peace and unity and connection and understanding? So Mother Teresa had a wonderful point. Mother Teresa was teaching us in her own actions to, to not only Think about what you want to grow, but be present in places and be doing things that are also taking your focus to what you want to grow, that are helping things that help to raise your vibration. You know, a lot of people think that Gandhi said this, the quote, be the change you want to see in the world. 
I actually thought he had said that too. But the truth is Gandhi didn't say that. Gandhi actually, Gandhi's whole thing was don't focus on the violence on what's negative, just refuse to be part of it. You know, don't obey laws that you don't believe are just. That's what he taught at a time when a lot of very unjust, prejudiced laws were being perpetrated on the people of India. What Gandhi actually said, which I thought was such a great statement, he said, if we change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change. As a man changes his own nature, so does the attitude of the world change towards him. If you want to change the world, start with yourself. That's the truth about what Gandhi said and what Gandhi stood for. And what he really tried to teach people was, you know, if you become violent or if you think violent, angry, resentful, hateful thoughts, there's an inner violence. And then if there's that kind of energy, there has to be an enemy. But because he didn't teach that, because he absolutely moved away from that, then he was actually able to create a situation in which the British left India and they were not enemies. The British left actually kind of thinking about what they had done. And it was a possible to heal the wounds between the British and the Indian people because Gandhi didn't work to create an enemy out of the British. He worked to create honor and respect and peace among the people themselves. So we have to look to what's our part, because I know a lot of us right now are fearful. We're confused. We don't really know what is the best way to handle what's going on. We're being deluged with negative news every day. Uh, we hear this perspective and that perspective, and, and I think many, many people are about to throw up their hands because they don't know what is the truth. They don't know what direction they really should pursue. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so delighted with the guest that I will be bringing to you today, because she has certainly been a beacon of peace in my life. She certainly has been an inspiration. And I think the path she follows and, and what she teaches is, is absolutely a beacon of light for all of us. I'm calling this show, You Are the Path to Peace. There is no some perfect something out there that we should all be looking to. We need to look to ourselves. We need to look inside and find that path to peace. And when we come back from this break, Brahman Kiri will be sharing her insights with us on finding that path to peace. We will be right back. Okay. BK, I'm going to just go ahead and bring it back now. This part will be edited out. And, uh, and then when I bring you in, if you can just turn your camera on and your volume, that'd be great. All right. <clears throat> Oops, let me just reset this. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio here with Paula Shaw. So glad you're here today. I'm calling this show, You Are the Path to Peace. And my guest, who's going to help us explore what's going on, what can we do, how can we best do it, how can we serve each other, how can we help each other find peace. That guest is Brahman Kiri. And let me tell you just a little bit about her before I bring her on. She comes to us from Adelaide, South Australia. She is a spiritual leader and a master healer who lives here in Encinitas, California now. She founded the Brahman Project, a humanitarian foundation focused on spiritual education for the soul, 
sacred ceremony, meditation, healing, prison rehabilitation programs, and support for animals, both here in the USA and globally. So I have the pleasure now of introducing you to Brahman Kiri. Please join us, Brahman Kiri. I'm so happy you're here. Hi, Paula. It's great to be here. Thanks so much for inviting me. Oh, thank you for being here. And I'm going to just switch us to the other view now so we can both be together. Ram and Kiri, you've heard what I shared in the first segment. And, you know, there's a lot going on out there right now. What are the emotions you feel are, are the most prominent right now at the core of the problem? And maybe even what emotions could be at the core of the solution? So I think like particularly spiritual people or, or anyone really, I think it's important that we don't spiritually bypass our feelings. So I know that at times like this, um, one of two things can happen. We can either we can either get entrenched in all of the negative energy and the woundedness and the mm -hmm. injustice and we can stay there and feed that. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes we, we move too quickly into just pray for peace. And it's like, it, that is so valid. We so need to do that. But I think we also, as a, as a nation, as a people, need to actually process the emotion around what we see happening in the world right now. And with, with me, on my personal path, you know, I was a person that didn't really, um, didn't do emotion very well, didn't like it, avoided <laughs> it at all costs, like give me anything to deal with my feelings, you know. <laughs> and as a result, it ended up in a lot of like emotional um I want to say deformities, but, you know, I, I was like medicating my feelings, avoiding them in codependent, all of that stuff, you know, mm -hmm. until I, until I learned to not do that. And then I learned to process my feelings. And when I started to do that, I started to become more peaceful within. And I got to this place of acceptance and, um, kind of, I wasn't at odds with the world anymore, you know? Mm. And so when I, I mean, it has been a monumentally massive 12 months, you know, it's just been so huge. Yeah. And I think that if you ask a lot of people in this country, they would say that the, the things that have been so mind blowing to a lot of us in the last 12 months has been going on for a long time, you know, in their life, mm. you know, injustice and rate racism and all that kind of stuff. And for, for me, what's been very important this year is absolutely exactly what you said, Paula, about focusing on what we do want, you know, so we want, a, so, and that's why I attended, you know, Black Lives Matter protests and stuff like that and marches is because um, if, if I'm in attendance to a Black Lives Matter um, movement, mm -hmm. I'm actually energizing that particular thought form, Black Lives right. Matter, into the collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. And historically, if we look at, you know, what, what has been in the matrix around, you know, Black Lives, it has historically not been that. And so I, I support that, which I, want, which I want to energize, which is to your point before around, mm -hmm. um, you know, I want to energize and, and put my energy in that place. And so, um, you know, focusing on things like justice and equality and, and truth and all of those things and um, dedicating spiritual practices to that every day if we can even if it's mm -hmm. like a two or five minute prayer and meditation to visualizing and seeing that and then we must do the other work I think we must address those feelings that we see externally in in others but we also we're part of that you know we're part yes. of the whole and so we're going to have our own feelings around all that I know I certainly did you know I had anger and I had rage and I had deep deep sorrow and pain and and it's okay to have that you know it, it would have been it wouldn't have been helpful for me as a human being to pretend like I didn't feel any of that and I'm just going to pray for right pain. yeah right and so often I think those of us on a spiritual path think we need to immediately move to peace and forgiveness and 
that's ultimately the great place to be, but you're so right. And that's part of what I really love about your teaching is that you say, be a human and experience what's real because, you know, as a therapist, I can tell you, I've watched people, especially in my grief groups, I've watched them try to move to forgiveness too quickly or try to say, oh no, this doesn't bother me. I'll just meditate. I'll just... You know, but the truth is we are humans first. Yes. And I think it's beautiful that you urge people to deal with that piece first, because I don't think you can actually come to the other piece until you do. We, we can't like the, for me, the mo one of the most powerful things I've experienced on the spiritual path is coming into alignment. So my emotional body and my mental body and everything coming into alignment because before I was so uh, fractured as a human being, you know, I, I had my head telling me that I was one thing. My behavior was certainly saying another. Mm -hmm. My emotional body was in tatters. And, but I'd tell you that I was fine. You know what I mean? I was so, there was so much dissonance in my being. Yes. So I actually was not living any kind of life at all. And mm -hmm. so, we are, yes, we're a soul. We are, we are our soul. That's what, that's the ultimate truth is that we're a, a drop of divine essence in physical form. That is, that is the highest truth of who we are. But also on these other levels, we have a mind, we have an emotional body, mm -hmm. i.e. an inner child. We mm -hmm. can't deny those things because mm -hmm. we're, otherwise we become split from reality. We become disconnected from each other. Yes. which is for me one of the the things around coming back into alignment as a you know mind body spirit is that i find god and peace and connection through connecting with other people and myself and i can't very well do that if i'm denying um parts of myself you know i can't right. i'm denying that i have feelings then that blob of energy that you so beautifully and eloquently spoke about before that everything is a vibration of energy and it is mm -hmm. if i'm denying say for example like when um that george floyd um lost his life mm -hmm. and and the and there's like the scab was pulled off of this this um yeah. this wound it was there was a lot of sorrow you know and it's like we've got to feel that we've got to know that's the first indication that there's something wrong right. that needs to be fixed you know and so we can't yeah. deny those feelings they're part of our um, internal guidance system that's telling us something might need to be renovated something needs to be changed you know mm -hmm. so um, I think feeling our feelings through all of this is one of the best things you can do for yourself but also the collective because the more we own of our own emotional nature Mm -hmm. the more we're going to clear out that imbalance or that that vibration out of the collective consciousness. Wow, that's a very interesting perspective I hadn't thought about, that we're actually helping the collective if we experience our emotion. We are, because if we deny it, mm -hmm. that part, that energy then gets disowned and it goes into a big blob in the collective. Ah. And then what happens is that manifests Mm -hmm. in things like riots and 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 whatever it is brutality or whatever like we got to own that stuff so like yes there has to be change with policy and with governments and with systems and organizations that is totally true there does mm -hmm. and we as people need to get more comfortable with owning that that, that part of us that is emotional so we can clear up the astral field a little bit, you know? Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I think what's hard for people is finding the balance between owning it, feeling it, mm -hmm. and not getting stuck in it and run by it, right? right. You know, I right. mean, that trap of be afraid, watch the news, talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, be afraid, watch the news, talk about it, talk about it, you know? And, and right. pretty soon your whole life yep. is this negative stuff Right. that you can't stop thinking about right. that then affects you spiritually, emotionally, physically, you know, in so many ways. Yep. So finding that balance point, I think is tricky. Yes. Uh, how do you, how do you help people with finding that? Well, I myself don't watch the news on the TV. Mm -hmm. I have people that I follow on Instagram or um, Facebook, mostly Instagram. Um, and, 
and I and I like to be informed. So I just I like to have the information. Yes. And then and then I'll have an emotional feeling about that. But then what I normally do is I allow myself to have the feeling and then I go and do a puja. So I get straight into service. Uh-huh. And so I think when we balance service with our emotional nature, for me, it, it helps me not like wallow in hopelessness, which mm-hmm. would be very, very easy to do in the last 12 months, it, to wallow in hopelessness because it seems like there's just been one thing after the other. Yes. And also what I when I do the puja, not only does it help me be part of the solution, mm-hmm. it actually helps me to expand my consciousness so I can get maybe even more of an idea of what's actually happening um, bigger picture framework you know like oh. yes there's a lot of pain yes there is there's tragedy there's systems that seem to be broken all around us and if we expand a bit more it's like the whole country is going through the eye of a needle where we're where we're dropping we're going to drop all these systems that don't work yes. we're going to expand and we're going to rise like the phoenix from the ashes that's oh. what's going to happen I love that. I love the balance, the service. We've got to take a break, but when we come back, let's explore that a little more. I really think that's a, such a huge point. Thank you, BK. We'll be right back. All right. If you're ready, we'll just go into the third segment here. <laughs> We're on a roll. Okay. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio. I am your host, Paula Shaw, and my guest, Today is Brahman Kiri, and we are talking about this whole situation we're dealing with in the world right now, where there's so much upheaval, there's so much change, people don't know what to believe, there's fear, there's anger, there's resentment, but we were just talking about how do you deal with that? How do you feel what you're really feeling and find balance because you don't want to get stuck in anger and fear and all of those low vibration emotions. And Brahman Kiri, my guest, spiritual teacher here in Encinitas, California, was just sharing with us that in her own life, what she tries to do is balance being informed with being of service because the service then takes us to a different vibrational level and helps us not to get stuck in the negativity. Is that correct? Am I saying that correctly, Brown? Brown exactly. Curry? Yes, totally. Because we gotta, we gotta feel like we're part of the solution, and we can be at yes. any moment because we're part of the whole. You know, so we're mm-hmm. actually part of what we're seeing all around us. And if we clean up our own consciousness, and and if we're doing things in service to help shift the vibration and lift the vibration, it does help to balance out out the emotional nature of um, hopelessness or distress Mm -hmm. that we could very easily fall into at a time like this. Super easy to fall into that. And you know, uh, there are things that obviously come to mind when you think of service, you know, serving in a, in a, soup kitchen kind of a thing or helping someone um, in, in a, who needs care or who needs transportation. But I th- there's another level of service too that Gandhi talked about that we, I think that we, that you bring to the fore here when you talk about the collective. So it's, it is a, a form of service, isn't it? When we work on our inner picture, our inner thoughts, our inner knowledge, right? When we work with our own vibration, that's contributing to the collective vibration. And that can be a form of service too, right? Absolutely. And you don't need to go and like, all you need to do is sit in your home, connect with God or the divine or the universe or love or whatever your flavor of spirituality is. And do your own inner excavation, maybe, you know, like with your mm-hmm. clear up your own energy and your own consciousness. You know, like, for example, some of the things that I've done in the last 12 months is if, if we look at the deeper cause of what racism is, it's pure ignorance, right? It's like thinking that you, that that person knows, knows better or, or has the right to act that way or whatever it's ignorance it's ignorance to think that there's you know 
um, that one person is better than the other because of the color of their skin. I mean, it's right. right? But if we look at, okay, the, the universe or the world around me is a reflection of self, what then I asked myself was, where am I being ignorant or where have I been ignorant? Because the root cause of racism and all the other forms of, you know, um, mm -hmm. spiritual malaise and just, um, you know, all of that stuff is ignorance, you know, mm -hmm. thinking it's just ignorance. So, so I asked myself, where am I being ignorant? Where have I been ignorant? And then I just owned it within and then I gave it to God. Please, please, I say Amma, you know, my, my name for God is Amma. Uh, please, Amma, um, I give you this ignorance. I see it in myself and I'm, I'm, I love it and then I'm going to give it to you. Please take it from me, you know. And so I just clean up that in myself um, and I was taught to do that by Shakti Deriga and also other things that I'm a part of where I was taught to do personal inventory. When I found myself at odds with the world, ah. I was taught to do personal inventory. And so, um, so that's what I do. And that for starters helps me feel better, but then also I know that it helps to clean up the collective mm -hmm. or the mass consciousness. And so, so I understand what you're saying correctly is like, let's say you, you look at a certain situation and you see greed, greed or something there, something that really incenses you that you really don't like. Rather than getting heated about it and talking about that to 15 people or getting fearful that everybody is greedy and it's gonna ruin the world, you then turn that and ask yourself, where am I greedy? Where does greed live in me? Yeah, particularly if there's a charge. So if, like, if there's a charge or if around, like, you know, the injustice or the greed or the whatever it is, then if I'm really worked up about it, that's a that's a sure sign that it lives within me. Ah. And the most powerful thing I can do is I can try and find it and own it within myself. Mm -hmm. And then, but I still also take the action. So I was taught to do the inner work first and then... Sometimes there's action, there's physical action, whether it's a conversation, whether it's a march, whether it's whatever. So when all that stuff started happening in early last year, it was like, you know, I was deeply, deeply sad about so much. But I, the, the teachings that I believe in, that I live my life by, tell me that I've got to find that stuff in myself first if I hope to help myself or the collective. Mm -hmm. And then I can do the footwork. And so that's why I did, I did attend Black Lives Matter marches and I did you know write signs and I did do all that stuff because I believe in creating that in the mass consciousness too. Absolutely. Yep. You know it seems to me one of the biggest problems is in and I see this in my practice all the time I'm sure you do too humans have this intense need to be right. Right. Yeah. Whatever they think you know yeah. how far yeah. out it might be <laughs> they have this need to be right. Why do you think that is? Well, I think I think probably a lot of us, I mean, I can say for sure that has been and can be me in, included in that, you know, if I'm not checking myself, if I'm too um, off, you know, off the beam, you know, for sure. Yeah. And I think that fundamentally, you know, I think some of us, I'll speak for myself, had got so far away from my divine connection and I'd become so self-reliant and it was like, I suffered from su such low self-esteem that my ego needed to feel that in order to feel okay. Yes. And so, you know, I can, I can actually, funny you bring that up. I can tell when I'm off the beam, when I've gone a little too far away from my center, those things become important about being right and, and being, you know, like all that. And, and then I know, ah, I've come away a bit from my center because the peace that comes from being in a place of surrender, knowing, and a place of acceptance. So Amma talks about, um, you know, when, when we're not in acceptance and not in surrender and we're fighting what's actually going on around us, the problems that we see around us have more energy than us because we're resisting them. Mm -hmm. But when we can actually move into acceptance and go, ah, this is, this, this is what's happening right now around me. I'm gonna move into acceptance we actually reclaim our energy and become bigger than the problem and then the problem sort of die away and, and we're able to sort of um, expand past the problem 
and and moving back into more of our power. And so, um, you know, I think sometimes it's hard to get into that place of acceptance and it's, it's hard because sometimes we want to go, no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> I'm not this gonna- is wrong. I can't accept it. Right. It's not right. It's not okay. That's right. what we do, right? But even in saying that, right, so even in saying, you know, that part of us that says that's not right, so moving into a sort of a different area around, like, say, injustice, right, and that mm-hmm. part of us that goes, no, that is wrong. That that is that that is not okay. You know, what I've tried to do because I used to get very angry, very self righteous, very <laughs> like that was all. I had a lot of hot air, you know. Uh, um, and what I learned to do was when I felt that that twang of injustice and that feeling that that is not right, process that energy of anger or self or whatever it is, process that energy. Mm-hmm. And then from that place of sort of divine connection, move forward with action, but not in that place of anger. So I've got to, I've got to right. clear that anger first and then take the action. Mm-hmm. And that's very different, you know. And it's amazing how that frees up your energy. Right. You know, like I, I, I think... I can remember a time in my life, like you described, where it was like, no, I can't be wrong. Because, And in me, it was also this need to be perfect. Oh, you know? oh yes, this, this huge need to be perfect. And if somebody pointed out my imperfection, it was almost unbearable. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that, that was a huge piece, you know, it was, and so much energy would go into trying to justify and, and trying to, Uh, defend myself and all that and now I find if I just if I step back for a minute and try to really hear what somebody's saying or see what they're pointing out Mm. it's hard is it I mean sometimes you feel it it's almost like a knot in your chest like an actual wounding but once you move past that oh my god it's so freeing to just go you're right I'm truly sorry that wasn't my intention, you know, and then boom, you have all this energy to move on. <laughs> Can you imagine if everyone, if everyone in this country mastered just what you said then, that little thing where when, when we're wrong or when we're a bit out of alignment or whatever, that we all had the humility to just say, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And then imagine if everyone did that. And that's the beautiful thing about each person working on themselves yes. as part of this collective, yes. that if, if the majority of us did that, then it would be at, then it would um, hold space for those people that really struggle with that, which was used to be me, um, you know. Which so I, I I see myself in in what's yeah. happening in the world. It actually holds space for those people to be able to to do the same. It's like mm. they would be able to lean into that consciousness, and by osmosis, it would be easier for them to do that. Oh. That's why the spiritual path is so important. Because if the majority of us actually just worked on that one thing that you just said mm-hmm. around, and and the thing that blocks us egoically is the shame. Exactly, we don't yeah. want to be imperfect. Yeah. We've got the wounding of shame as little people, you know. Oh, and yeah. so if we allow that to melt, and we actually just let deal with that emotion, that in, emotional energy of shame, and then just melt in it and surrender, and then come back into that place of I'm sorry, I'm wrong, mm-hmm. or I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. Yes. It would completely change everything. Oh, you're so right, and I. I want to continue this discussion. We've got to take a quick break, but we will come right back and let's pick up right there. Be right back. All right, if you're ready, we'll go. (laughs) Welcome back to Change It Up Radio here with Paula Shaw. My guest today is one of my favorite people in the whole world, and I'm so excited she's here with me. Her name is Brahman Kiri. She is a spiritual teacher here in Encinitas, California. And by the way, before I forget, Brahman Kiri, I want to get back into what we were saying because it was so important as far as doing our own work and being able to move to acceptance and neutrality and, and ultimately forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Um, but tell people first how they can find you, how they can learn more about your work and maybe about satsang, which is my favorite part of the week every week. Oh. Yeah, so satsang we do every Sunday online at 8.30 a.m. in the morning, goes to about 10. 
and that's on my public figure page and my personal page. Um, it's just Brahman Kiri Shanti on Facebook. Uh, and then I have a website called um, thebrahmanproject.com, which is a sort of uh, shows what we do spiritually, so spiritual education, um, a little bit about the prison stuff that we do, uh, some animal stuff, and basically the sacred ceremony that we do here in the temple daily. And then I also have a website, um, freedomontheinside.org, which we just went live with that this week, which we're so excited about. And um, that shows all of the prison stuff that we've, we've been doing over the last nearly three years. And, um, and also the re-entry stuff that this organization does for um, guys that are just getting out. Mm, that is so great, so great. Um, and of course, you were the force that got me involved in doing work in Donovan State Prison as well. And, and you know, just a quick update, and then I would want to finish what we were talking about. Is there, is it still possible for people to volunteer or to go into Donovan or is it locked down now because of COVID? Yeah, it's locked down now. That's what and I thought. When yeah. I get in, sadly, we're all so desperate to get back in there. They're part of, they're our community, you know what I mean? They're our sole um, family. And so we're all desperate to get back in there. We've had some correspondence, you know, in and out, um, but we're, we're not able to get back in there at the moment. It's just too dangerous for yeah. them that they had a huge spike in numbers. So it's just too dangerous. But the yeah. second we're allowed back in there, we'll be banging those doors down. <laughs> <laughs> we stand I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it occurs to me that this concept we were just discussing about the shame and that that need to be rightness, you know, that so many people are filled with, that really is what's keeping us entrenched in these sides rather than unifying and, and correcting what's not working in the world. You know, I mean, that, when I even say those words, that feels so much lighter and better than you're wrong, I'm right, this isn't good, you know, this person's bad, blah, blah, you know, all those things that people worry about. And, you know, I, I realized that part of what I felt was magical in the work in Donovan is that there we were helping the the people in Donovan who obviously at some point in their life for a variety of reasons had made some bad decisions mm -hmm. and so they ended up in prison but rather than preaching to them or judging them or my god never shaming them we were helping them to learn how to come to this neutrality that you're talking about this ability to see the truth within yourself, you know, own what you need to change within yourself and then being freed that I think your whole concept freedom from the inside, that's almost the core of it right there. Isn't it BK? And, and a lot of the guys like, um, like have made bad decisions as have I, like, I just go, I'm lucky I didn't get prison time you know for mm -hmm. some of the way I the things I used to do and the way I used to live and um I just never got caught mm. and so and some of the things I, I didn't actually do you know what I mean I didn't follow through with some of the things that I as a as a teenager you know had these great ideas of you know how to you know um you know clear pain and 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 save people and whatever and it was I was a kid so mm. it's just like these guys are doing amazing things in their their um really conscious doing really amazing work and and it's such a blessing for me to be able to go in there and work with them oh yeah. so great yeah. so i think one of the things that we've we've kind of distilled in this conversation is that ultimately we want to come to acceptance to forgiveness and yeah. to peace yeah. but first we have to feel what's real we have to feel our human feelings we have to do work with them yeah. Um, we have to own it in ourselves if it exists in ourselves. And as you pointed out, if you've got a charge about it, you probably own it. <laughs> yep. What is that old saying? If you spot it, you got it. it. <laughs> so we, we want to come to forgiveness, to acceptance. But as you pointed out, you know, you have to, that has to happen as a natural progression. And first comes feeling your feelings. But are there any practices or any um, behaviors or tools 
that you really love, Brahm and Kiri, that we can share with people that maybe can help them to move from the obsession with the news and the anger and what's wrong to this place of being a more positive contribution to the collective? So a couple of things, like I think um, it's always good to look at it, find ourselves in what we're seeing around us, you know, so that we can get that relief and we can become a bit more right-sized instead of that self-righteous kind of, you know, like it's, it's good for us, it's actually really good for us. But also like what I do, particularly when I am hope feel hopeless mm-hmm. um, or immense pain or immense anger or some really uh, charged feelings, and this sounds really flaky, but it's actually one of the things that that I do on a daily basis that that really helps me in, in, in my life, you know, which is parent the inner child. Mm-hmm. And um, and it has many levels, but at the, the most basic level, which is really powerful, is if I'm really triggered, the very first thing I do, if I'm if those emotions are really up in me and I'm really triggered, the very first thing I do is I find a, like a, a, a quiet place or one or two minutes, I put my hand on my heart, no one has to see me, and I just tell my little girl, which is the, the emotional trigger, that's my inner child is, is my little girl. Right. I just tell her, I've got you, I'm not leaving, I know you're angry, I know you're angry, I'm not leaving, um, you know, we're going to work through it, but I know you're angry and it's okay, you know. So I just acknowledge those feelings without denying them or pretending I'm fine. I just acknowledge her. And then what normally happens is that energy dissipates a little bit and then I can go on to probably being appropriate because, you know, when we're driven by our emotions, sometimes we can be a little unruly, yeah. um, you know, and then we got to clean it up, which is okay too. But, you know, if we can prevent, uh, you know, a mess, emotional mess, then great. You know? mm-hmm. So that's the very first thing I would do, particularly at the moment, is like there's so much energy and so much emotional energy that people are flying off the cuff at each other which is people are freaking out the people are in fear and stress and and triggered and deep woundedness like the wound of the country is being exposed the wound of the country are being exposed and um so the very first thing i think that would be helpful that helps me is parenting my emotional nature first parenting that little girl and then when i'm calm discerning do I need to have an empower conversation do I need to go and do some service so I feel part of the solution and I don't feel hopeless do I need to do a puja and dedicate it for this to the country do I need to do some prayer and send you know the second we get into prayer we're activating the divine essence within us very powerful do I need to do some prayer for someone right now um, and those things have got me through the last 12 months um, well you know Yes. You know, some of our listeners probably don't know what a puja is. Would you explain? Uh, Puja is a devotional practice that you could do if you have a spiritual teacher or guru, if you have, if your guru is Jesus, um, if your master is Jesus or anyone really, um, an angel, an archangel, um, a photo, your pet, you could do a puja to your pet if you want. Um, A puja is a devotional ceremony where we're just in the reverence um, of the divine. And the more, we, it could be a flower puja, it could be an abhishekam, which is a water puja. Um, and really, when we're just in that reverence of the divine in whatever flavour or form is your thing, mm-hmm. uh, it, it cultivates really good energy, really beautiful energy, and it clears the mind, clears the energy field, and it also helps the whole of nature around you. Mm-hmm. And that really comes right back to what we were saying in the very beginning, where you were talking about one of the ways to create balance in our life is to be of service. Yes. That after we've done our inner work, then we need to do some outer work and be of service either to the collective consciousness or in some concrete way, if you're giving food at a food bank or helping someone across the street. Yep. Or, you know, uh, one of the things that, that I like to do, especially if I'm feeling down, is just where I go. And of course, we're all very much more limited these days in where we're going. But be sure to smile, be sure to say something a little bit extra to the person, whether it's the bank teller or the cashier, 
thank them for what they're doing. They showed up today and allowed me to do what I needed to do. And I think if we all, even if we're not speaking the words, but if we go out into the world with that energy, it's definitely doing a, a service to help raise the vibration so that everything can be happening in a more beautiful, peaceful way. Totally. Having your attitude and your energy in a place of service for others is, is a really great thing. Yep. Beautiful. Yeah. And what a perfect place for us to end. BK, this time has flown by and it has just been such a joy to me to have your wisdom, your inspiration and your presence as part of my show. And I love the work that you are doing at Donovan and everything else you're doing. And I highly urge anybody listening to this show to tune in to Brahman Kiri Shanti on Sunday mornings at 8.30 and attend satsang with me. It is truly the highlight of my week. Mm. I love you. I thank you. you. Thank you so much for having me. It was a total blessing. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you to all my listeners. And you can hear this show on KCBQ AM 1170 and FM 96.1 in San Diego on Sunday evenings at nine o'clock. And we are on every major podcast platform. Siri and Alexa can find us in a heartbeat. So be sure to stay with us. Tune in. We always bring you lots of great guests to help you change it up <laughs> in an easier way. All right. Thanks for being with us. See y'all next week. Bye-bye.